uh, coach, obviously after the you know having finals week and things like that, just well, how do you how have you observed I guess the way in which they're uh, approaching practice? Do you feel like their rhythm's been impacted at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a normal final week in which uh, um, you feel like their their minds are divided, you know, on the court and off the court, and it's it's hard to compartmentalize. Um, during final week, uh, especially when you're trying to do well, you're trying to make sure you uh, you pass your classes and 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 get to the next semester. So, I mean, we we force them to just lock in to be with us for the two hours that we you know we dedicated to practice. Don how does that schedule go? I mean, I know the yeah. school's still in, so you just say like, I don't want to see you here except for those two hours. I mean, or do they have free time to come in the gym, and shoot some free throws, or whatever? Yeah, they, yeah, they do. I mean, not all of them have finals like all day. Um, I think we're finished today. And actually, they have something to turn in on, on Saturday, um, but they pretty much have have all day besides just cramming and, and studying with uh, the tutors, just trying to make sure they. They give it their best, the effort to, to, to pass their finals. Obviously, some huge news yesterday with Brittany yeah. getting released. Just when yeah. did you first hear about it? And just how long did it take you to just kind of yeah. compartmentalize and realize that she's finally coming home? Yeah, I mean Wednesday morning. I got, I had no clue. I mean, a friend called me and told me, and I immediately just started looking at social media, and then it, it tells it all. Um, but just super happy, like super happy. I, I don't know why I had a feeling of. Uh, I think I talked to a reporter on on Wednesday, like Wednesday. I'm like Wednesday morning. I'm like, I don't know why I have this strange feeling that she's going to be home before Christmas. Like, I just said it out loud. It was what I was feeling, and it actually ended up coming out loud. I, I, I don't really have anything to do with this stuff. <laughs> like playing well beyond yesterday, obviously, but I just had I just had a feeling that you know God's grace is upon her, and. You know, it happened, so I'm happy. I'm super happy for it. Was there a first call you made or first person you talked to when you got the news just kind of to, to take it in? No, no. I mean, I just I text a couple of friends who have been keeping up with it and, and were really close to the situation. Um, and, I mean, we just rejoiced. It was, it, it's, you know, it's unimaginable um, that you're, you know, someone that you know. And you hear about stories and well, people who are wrongly detained abroad and you feel for them. Um, but there's a deeper feeling when, when you actually know the person and you know what kind of heart they have. Um, so we're going we're gonna to keep praying the prayers uh, for Paul because we, we thought Brittany, Brittany's reputation and um, just her being in the public eye would be enough to bring both of them home. Um, that, that wasn't the case, but we, we still have to steadfastly move forward and, and helping you know, the same God that got Brittany home will get Paul home. It's obviously been a whirlwind of a 24 or 48 hours for Brittany getting back. Have you been able to speak with her, anyone in her circle since? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. No, nope. it, it actually is not even about that. I, I don't even. Want, I mean, I want her to be able to, you know, uh, embrace and talk to the, her loved ones that she couldn't do it, couldn't do it for for nine months. So I think I think Brittany knows the basketball community, the people who really love her and know her, know, you know. We're, we're not a priority for her. We know who the priorities are, and we weren't doing it for us. We were doing it to get her home, to be with family members. Anything else for Coach? Uh, Coach, I guess going into Sunday, um, in preparation for the Liberty, just what are some things uh, on tape that you notice that they do well? And, uh, yeah, they, they run pretty good offense. They, they, they're, pretty, they're pretty calculating in what they want to do. Um, they shoot threes. They got a big inside that – you know, she's shooting over 60% from the floor. Uh, I mean, they just seem like they're, they're Legos. They just fit with each other. Um, so we, we, we got a game to play. We got, we got really, we got, a, we, we got a tough game to play, and we're not going to take anybody lightly. So, you know, for us, we, we want to play fast. We want to get up and down the floor. <laughs> we we want to get up and down the floor. Play fast. We don't know if they're going to pack it in, but we've been working on just some transition to get down the floor, make good decisions, and convert. Oh, uh, yeah. And following up to that, early season games like this, of course, there's been good production from your bench unit. Just, you know, what is that, I guess, what is their production, I guess, for you guys at this stage of the season kind of do uh, later down the line? I mean, we, we want them. We, we want them to get up and going. You know, we, we, we have been working with, a, you know, a unit 
this week that hopefully they 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 will they will play with the energy that they, they've been playing with in practice, um, so we can so we can get them in the game. Like we we need more from Coop, we we need more from Ashland, we need more from um, Sanaya. We we just need more. I think um, uh, Camilla's turned the page. Like I mean she's she's been consistent over the last couple of games. So and if it works for Camilla, it can work for anybody. Like. I want the other players to step up and give us, um, give us a push. Give us get, you know, be a part of the scouting report. Like be a part of somebody's scouting report that they have to prepare for. That's 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 what I want. I want them to prepare for 13 players. 13. When you got to spend as much time on 13 players, um, that's when you're saying something. Ellie was saying that one thing about that she learned from November that she would like to see change in December is just recovering from fatigue. And she said the <laughs> California trip taught them a lot about that. How do you get better at that? How do you fix that? Is that just game experience throughout the season or what? Oh, I mean, one is prepping them. Like two weeks prior to the trip, we're like, hey, this is what it's going to feel like. Like it's not going to happen overnight. So you got to start like, like now, two weeks prior to the trip. We're going to be tired. We're going to get home late. Like, I mean, that in itself is, is a hard recovery. But if you don't prep before that, it's harder. It's, it's harder, you know, being on a different time zone, getting back at, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning. Um, obviously we didn't practice for two days. So um, just trying to get them back on their, their schedule, but it's, it's hydrating, it's eating properly and trying to get back on your, your, your Eastern time schedule. Thank you, Coach. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.